Hello, I hope everybody had a great Easter weekend. So everybody took some time to take care of yourself. So today I'm just going to get right into it because I've got some stuff to do, but I want to talk about what's going on and what we're seeing right now with our, uh, just throughout America right now. And a lot of what I'm seeing is, um, just the struggle that we're all having right now to get supplies to and get the things we need. And I know for me personally, I was trying to order some gloves and different supplies for my center and everywhere I went, it's saying that they are reserved for uh, the medical per profession only. So it is getting difficult for us right now to get a hold of different things like gloves, hand sanitizer, uh, and face masks. You know, the governor here basically told employers that we need to provide protective gear, but it's hard to provide protective gear when it's not out there, right? So it is frustrating that we are not being recognized as the essential workers that we are, right? It is, it is actually getting pretty frustrating for us that we are essential. On the one hand, we are being asked to stay open. I also had a phone call today from a state official who was very supportive and wonderful and telling us how important it is that we stay open but as an owner it is it's hard it is very hard when I'm trying to get these supplies for my staff and when I'm trying to get the supplies that we need to take care of these children but we can't get them we are being asked to stay open as essential but we're not being treated as essential it feels like right it feels like um, people want us to be there for the medical fields and uh, children, for truck drivers' children. We're caring for the front lines' children, but then we're not being treated like it. So I think that's why it's time for us to start advocating. And as you come in, pop on and say hello so I know you're there. And uh, if it's replay, hashtag me with a replay. But I, we really need to get our voice heard. I was thinking about it this weekend. And as frustrating it is for us not to be recognized as essential. And when we hear, like, um, I heard uh, Senator Chuck Schumer talking and some different people. And they're talking about, you know, healthcare workers, grocery store workers. But they keep leaving childcare out. And I keep seeing posts on Facebook about, oh, they forgot us again. They forgot us again, right? So I was just really thinking about it. I'm like, okay, yes, this feels frustrating. But what are we doing about it? I think we really need to step back and ask ourselves, what are we doing about it? And we need to start taking responsibility for this. As early childhood professionals, that want to be seen as professionals and want to be recognized as the professionals that we are, we need to start standing up and doing something about it. We absolutely can do something and we need to. Hello, Annette. So if we want to be recognized, we need to do the work to get recognized. And that's why we really need to start advocating. And it's not hard to do. It's something we can easily do. Um, we just really need to start getting to the point where we start emailing, we start getting on the news, we start doing what we need to do to have our voice heard. And yes, we can do what we need to do to have our voice heard. If we unite as a field, we can do what we need to do to have our voice heard. Hi, Victoria. But we need to do it. All I'm seeing right now is people complaining that we're not being seen but I'm not seeing any action being taken. So I really want to start a movement where we can start taking action. So I'm going to ask those of you who watch this video to share this video. I want to really just start getting this spread around to early childhood educators. So any of the Facebook pages that you're on, I'm going to upload the video to YouTube so we can share it uh, to get more early educators out there spreading the word. In the comments, I am going to put links to areas that we can start uh, spreading the word. I did some research on some of the places that we can go. The first thing I would recommend is get on board with the NAEYC. 
They are a fantastic, um, you know, they do a ton of advocating already. So there's no sense in us reinventing the wheel. But get on board with your local NAEYC, see what you can do. But the other thing that we can all do is we can start sending emails to our congressmen, our senators, our state legislature people. You guys, those people are on Facebook. Find your local representative's Facebook page and start posting on there. And, you know, we'll, we should use like the same hashtag, like um, I see hashtag child care is essential, but we need to start really, we need to start a movement. We need to get this going. We have a big enough voice, but we're not using it. And until we start using it, we really have no right to complain. We are not, we're, we're in our own little circles, we're complaining, but we're not doing anything to spread the word. So we really do need to get together as a profession and start spreading the word, you guys. We can make a difference if we unite. So I'm gonna ask you guys, spread this video. I'm going to put uh, links in the comments on how to get a hold of your uh, state representative. I've got the Senate, Congress, where you can find everybody. The other thing we need to do is get a hold of your local news channels. You guys know I was on the news here in my local area. It was really easy. All I did was I went on a news channel. I found the contact information for a local news host that normally does things that have to do with families. Think about when you watch the news, right? Or even just watch the news for a couple days. Look at the stories in your local community. Find that reporter that is targeting family issues, that seems to actually care about family issues, and send them an email. That's all I did. That's all I did to get on the news. Send them an email about what's going on, about what you're feeling, about how we are trying to provide care for essential children. But it's difficult when we can't get supplies when we are not being observed as essential employees. So if you want, um, I can probably uh, cut and paste that email that I wrote to uh, my, I'll probably just cut and paste it and maybe put it in a Word document or something and post it in the COVID-19 uh, units. And actually, you know what I'll do? I'll actually create a units tab for advocacy. I'm also working with the Child Care Advocacy, advocacy Alliance, sorry, and trying to get them on board with us to come and do some short advocacy trainings with me so that we can get on board and maybe during this time, if you're closed, you can get on, watch these trainings and start doing something. It's really easy. We can do them just from our laptops, even from our phone. Find your state representative on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and send them a message. Make sure they hear our voice. We can have a voice, but we need to do what we need to do to be heard right now. So that is something that we really, really need to start doing. We really have no right to sit and complain. I, I just, I keep seeing all these videos going around and all these posts where people are like, oh, we were forgotten again. But what are you doing about it? If you're not doing anything about it, how valid is your complaint? That's what I, you know, I really have to say on that. If we really want to be seen, we have to have a voice. And together we can have that voice. But we need to step up and start doing what we need to do. So I'm going to put some stuff together for you guys. I'm going to try and create some graphics that can be shared. Um, some, so if you guys have any good uh, taglines, let me know. Hi, Deidre. Uh, let me know, like we can put it in some cool graphics, start spreading it around, you know, so people can see us. And those are all graphics that you'll be able to share to your state representatives pages, right? So I'm going to, I'm, I want to just put an entire campaign together. And I am trying to work with Child's Advocacy Alliance. They have been absolutely wonderful. Get them on board so that they can help. But more importantly, we need you guys. They need to hear from us. They need to hear from those of us who are actually in the field of working. You guys know what it's like. Our state licensing, uh, they try, you know, there's a lot of different uh, universities are trying. 
but none of them are doing what we do. They're not in the field. They're not in the classrooms. They're not inside a center. So as much as they are doing to help us and as wonderful as they are, they need to hear from us. They need to hear from those of us that are in the trenches, in the field, trying to do this day in and day out. So we really need to just unite as a field. We can have our voice heard, but we need to do the work. So I am more than happy to create templates for everybody. Uh, I can, again, like I said, I'll share with you guys the email that I use to get on the news. I will share with you guys the letters that I'm sending to my uh, representatives and I have no problem, you know, maybe creating a PDF that you guys can cut and paste and send it to your own. But it is, if we want to be seen, we have to have a voice. And, uh, you know, the, the Senate right now is talking about, I, I, it's a Congress or the Senate, I don't know which one right now, but I know they're talking about the hazard pay. And I saw a lot of complaints that we weren't included as one of the industries that deserves hazard pay. But I would like to know if that's something you complained about, did you do something about it? Did you send an email? Did you make sure your voice was heard? Because otherwise, all you're doing is complaining, right? And we can do something together. So throughout this week, I am going to be posting videos on how we can start to advocate and how we can have a voice and even if you're not in the United States you can do this it doesn't matter where you are we can all have a voice whether you're a teacher a director an owner we need to have our voice heard so I'm going to start putting stuff out there and I'm going to try and coordinate some kind of training with the Advocacy Alliance so that we can learn on different things we can do but for right now I would definitely get a hold of your local NAEYC chapter try to get on the news and start emailing and share this video you guys on all the groups that you're in so that we can get everybody to start doing this if we can get a few you know there's so many of you guys of us there's over a million child care workers in this country if just half of us start to really advocate and have our voice heard you guys we can get the recognition that we want so badly but we really and we deserve, by the way, we deserve the recognition, right? We work so hard to protect these children. And I know a lot of us are coming in every day and we're scared too, right? But we're doing it because we love the children in our care and we want to make sure that they are getting the best, right? I, I know for my kids here, I'm at my center right now, we want to make sure that they are still getting that quality and that I know that they're being protected and that they're getting all of the nurturing that they need. So it's so important though for us to make sure that the rest of the world recognizes and sees us so that we're not left out. With these provisions, the hazard pay, the different things that are coming out, we don't want to be left out and we shouldn't be left out. We deserve all of this, right? We deserve the recognition. We are on the front lines too. So we need to unite as one voice right now. It is so important for us to unite you guys. And I know we can do it. I have faith. I think a lot of times, a lot of you just don't know what to do. So I'm going to start posting things and trying to act as a guide on what we can do. And so if, you know, this is new to you, like my Facebook page, uh, my Facebook group, Child Care Business Coach, so that you can get more materials and information on how to advocate for our field. And I hope everybody just pitches in sends a quick email. Again, I'm going to have the links for you guys so you can find where to advocate and how we can make sure we have a voice. So I'm just going to keep it short today and I will let you guys know I do have a meeting tomorrow uh, with the Child Care Advocacy Alliance to see what I can get put together for us uh, by way of trainings. And I'm going to just try and bring those trainings right here on Facebook where it's easy. I can record it and post it so later on you guys can come back and watch it. Uh, and we can all learn how to advocate to make sure that our voice is heard. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments, message me, um, and share this video, you guys, so we can start getting those wheels turning and get that advocacy going and have our voice heard. Have a wonderful day, you guys. I will talk to you later this week, and I'll come out with a schedule as soon as I get one for you. Thanks.